Welcome to Communication 200, Mass Communication and Society. This is Professor Jody Gurman at Mendocino College. Today we're going to be looking at Chapter 5, Television and Cable, The Power of Visual Culture. First, let's look at the origins and development of television. In 1948, only 1% of U.S. households had a television set. By the early 1960s, more than 90% of all U.S. homes had a TV. In the late 1880s, invention of the cathode ray tube and the scanning disc made the transmission of visual images possible for the first time. Television's early history involved a patent battle between a Russian scientist and a young man from Idaho, Philo Farnsworth. The analog NTSC standard for all U.S. television sets was adopted in 1941. The FCC declared a freeze on new television licenses from 1948 to 1952. Deliberations about color TV standards began in 1952, but it wasn't until 1966 that all three networks broadcast in color. By the early 1960s, television had become a dominant mass medium and cultural force. New, longer formats, which single sponsors couldn't afford, allowed networks to shift to a spot ad system and limit sponsor control of program content. Quiz shows were popular, first on radio and then on television, but audiences were shocked to learn that sponsors had rigged the shows to make them more interesting and to improve ratings. The scandal undermined Americans' expectations of the democratic promise of television and gave birth to contemporary cynicism about electronic culture. The Development of Cable CATV systems originated in Oregon, Pennsylvania, and New York City, where mountains or tall buildings blocked regular TV reception. National cable programming is downlinked from satellites and then sent out to households in a service area from the head end or computerized nerve center. By 1999, 70% of homes had cable, although that number dropped below 50% by 2010 due to online and direct broadcast satellite or DBS service competition. Consumers choose programming from a two-tiered system of basic and premium cable channels. A typical basic cable system consists of 100 plus channels including local broadcast, local access, and local PBS, as well as cable channels like CNN, MTV, Comedy Central, and so on. Premium channels lure customers with promises of no advertising, recent and classic Hollywood movies, and original movies or series. Direct broadcast satellite, or DBS, systems transmit signals directly to small satellite dishes near or on customers' homes, offering many of the same channels and services that cable providers offer. Short comedy skits were a key element in early TV variety shows. These are sometimes called sketch comedy, and they live on in programs like Saturday Night Live. Situation comedy is a type of comedy featuring a recurring cast in which character development is downplayed in favor of zany plots. Characters and settings are usually more important than complicated predicaments in domestic comedy. A dramedy is a mix of comic and dramatic elements. TV dramas developed in two directions from early stage influences. Anthology drama as artistically significant teleplays featuring changing stories, casts, directors, writers, and sets from week to week. An episodic series is where the main characters and setting remain the same from week to week. Each episode of a chapter show has a self-contained beginning, middle, and end. Serial programs like soap operas are more open-ended. Hybrids have both self-contained episodes and storylines that extend over several episodes. Since the 1960s, broadcast news, especially on local TV stations, has consistently topped print journalism in national research polls that ask which news medium is most trustworthy. Daily evening newscasts began on NBC in February of 1948 with the Camel Newsreel Theater. 
CBS News premiered in May of 1948. It was the first news show to be videotaped for rebroadcast on affiliate stations in Central and Western time zones. The ABC network launched a successful daily news show in 1953. Then the success of the cable news network, CNN, and the headline news channel in the 1980s revealed a lucrative market for 24-hour news. Other genres like talk shows, game shows, news magazines, variety programs, and sporting events have played major roles in television history. Reality TV and Spanish language television are two of the fastest growing trends. Created in 1969, the Public Broadcasting Service, or PBS, has aimed to provide educational programming for children and to serve other audiences deemed less attractive to commercial networks. Let's examine the economics and ownership of television and cable. Networks and cable services work hard to attract the audiences and subscribers that net them a share of the $60 billion in annual television advertising revenues. In terms of production, networks, producers, and film studios spend fortunes creating programs that they hope will keep audiences coming back. In terms of distribution, production companies have a variety of ways to get money from broadcasters or cable companies for their programs. Syndication keeps shows going and going. Television programmers can lease exclusive rights to game shows, talk shows, and reruns of regular programs. Let's look at the types of syndication. Off-network or rerun syndication allows production companies to make enormous profits with reruns of popular shows. First-run syndication usually refers to programs like game shows or talk shows. Television stations can offer cash, advertising time, or a combination of both. Thanks for listening. Tune in next time when we talk about Chapter 6, Movies and the Impact of Images.